Joining us now is Peter Schiff, CEO and Chief Global Strategist at Euro Pacific Capital. Peter, welcome back to Newsmax TV. Well, thanks for having me back, Kathleen. Well, President Obama this week came out swinging at Congress, blaming both parties for getting the country into the debt crisis. What is your reaction to that, and how do you see the debt debate playing out? Well, the president is right, but you know he's part of the blame as well. He was a member of Congress for a while, and as a president, he has been pursuing policies that have increased the deficit. Government spending has exploded under the Obama administration, financed uh, by deficits. So uh, he is certainly part of the problem, and so far he is not part of the solution. What do you think are the chances of an actual U.S. default? Well, I think the, the chances of an official default where we don't pay, I think, is rather slim. I think, alternatively, we'll end up defaulting through inflation, which is uh, just as bad and maybe even worse. And so under that type of default, we don't refuse to pay. We simply pay in money that has very little value. And so our creditors end up uh, bearing a huge loss, as well as anybody who has U.S. dollars or anybody who is uh, working for a paycheck in U.S. dollars. There are a lot of losers when we default through inflation, and I think that is the path that we're on. Now, you've gone on record warning of a double and triple dip recession. Is that indeed where we're headed? Absolutely. I mean, as long as the government tries to engineer phony recoveries based on monetary and fiscal stimulus, uh, that each recovery sows the seeds of its own destruction. Because as soon as the stimulus wears off, the hangover sets in. And the hangover is a return to recession. We're not going to have a real, genuine, lasting recovery until the government gets out of the way and allows the market to correct. We need to go through a real recession. As painful as that is, the government has to stop numbing the pain uh, with the Novocaine. What we need is uh, a restructuring of our economy. We need less spending, less debt, less consumption, more savings, more production, less government, fewer regulations. A, a lot of things are, ne are needed to get a real recovery. Unfortunately, we don't get any of that. We just get more of this artificial stimulus and so we go from recession to recession. Peter, how much longer till we enter double dip or are we already there? Well, I actually think we're in a depression and I think the depression is interrupted briefly by the phony uh, expansion that we get from the stimulus. But all we're doing is spending more borrowed money. So we're not stimulating the economy. We're stimulating all the problems in the economy and we're making them worse. Peter, how do you think the economy will fare as QE2 ends, and do you see QE3 happening? Well, absolutely. I think without QE3, uh, we will be in potentially a worse recession than what happened in 2008. Now, that doesn't mean I think we should have QE3. We shouldn't. We shouldn't have, we shouldn't have had QE2. We shouldn't have had QE1. But unfortunately, the Federal Reserve is not going to do the right thing. As soon as it sees the economy relapsing into recession, it sees the markets going down, it sees unemployment going up, they will be back to their old tricks. They will be cranking out the press money. Whether they call it QE3 or not really makes no difference. The fact of the matter is they're going to print money and buy government debt, and that's inflation. Okay, let's talk about the stock market. Some are saying that the stock market's 18% rise is evidence that the economy will sustain recovery. You're saying that that is not the case here. So where's the market headed? Well, it depends on what the Fed does. I mean, if there is no QE3 which I doubt, but if that happens, the market's going a lot lower. Uh, but if the Fed prints more money, uh, then the market's going to go higher, but in, term, in nominal terms only. It's not going to go higher priced in gold. Uh, it won't go higher even priced in other commodities. So all the Fed is doing is creating inflation. And so it creates the illusion that the stock market is going up, but it's not. Our money is losing value, and we're simply measuring stock prices in cheaper money. And so it looks like stocks are going up, but really it's our money going down. And so people might on paper be richer, uh, but in reality they're going to be poorer because when they go to spend their money, uh, they're not going to be able to buy as much. How much higher and how much lower on paper could the market go? Well, I mean, there's no way to know. I mean, how low is the dollar going to go? I mean, there's no bottom. I mean, if the dollar were to become worthless, uh, then the value of the stock market would be infinity. Uh, so I don't know how low the dollar is going to go. My guess is it could lose at least 50% of its value from here, maybe 60 or 70% or more, uh, which means the stock market is going to have to double or triple just to stay even. And I doubt that's going to happen. But I can certainly see the Dow going up uh, 50%. Uh, with the dollar losing 70% of its value. So yes, the stock market will be higher, but 
that will be of little comfort to people holding stocks because when they sell them and spend the money or they try to spend their dividend checks, uh, food is going to be a lot more expensive, energy is going to be a lot more expensive. And so, you know, we may feel a richer or, or look richer on paper, but we're going to feel a lot poorer uh, when we go shopping. Peter, how are you positioning your clients for the market today? Well, I've been following pretty much the same investment script for about a decade, which is positioning myself and my clients for the ultimate uh, decline in the dollar. I mean, that is how all of this is going to ultimately work out. Uh, we will default, I believe, through inflation. The U.S. government is going to try to inflate away its debts, which means it inflates away everybody's assets if those assets are in dollars. So you need to be invested abroad. You need to be in foreign currency denominated stocks and bonds, particularly stocks. You need to own commodities, uh, particularly precious metals, gold and silver. I think this has been a winning strategy for the past decade, and I think it will continue uh, to be a winning strategy, uh, particularly as long as we have an, 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 a reckless Congress and an incompetent Fed chairman uh, repeating the mistakes of their predecessors. Okay, George Soros recently said that weak nations will abandon the euro. Do you see that happening? Eventually, I think the euro uh, could end up falling apart, but uh, not in the next several years. I think the currency that is in more danger of imploding right now is the dollar. I think the Europeans are making a lot of mistakes uh, the way they're handling the crisis in Greece or Ireland or potentially you know, Portugal or other countries. I think they're making a lot of mistakes. They're doing what's politically expedient as opposed to what's good economics and what's good for the euro currency or the eurozone economies. Uh, so ultimately, I think there will be problems. But as I said, I think they're going to put a Band-Aid on this situation and uh, people are going to think they've solved the problems. They haven't. They've postponed them. But in the interim, the spotlight is going to go back away from Europe and be focused right here on the United States because we have far more pressing problems uh, than, uh, than Europe does. And I think the dollar uh, is going to have its crisis before the euro. Now, we talked about gold earlier. Our audience is very interested in the future of gold. Do you see it as a purely speculative market, or is there credence to the theory that it will be used to back a currency in a post-dollar-dominated world as gold bugs do? And if you believe the latter, do you have a time frame in mind in which that will play out? I believe it. I don't necessarily know what the time frame is, but I think if we have a real currency crisis in this country where the dollar is imploding, interest rates and consumer prices are skyrocketing, uh, in the type of uh, environment that that will usher in, civil unrest, riots, uh, who knows, uh, maybe the politicians will finally do the right thing and go back to a gold standard. I know our creditors, like China, their economy is suffering lots of inflation because they anchored their currency to the dollar. That was a mistake. Uh, you can't anchor your currency to something that has no anchor in and of itself. The dollar has no value. The Chinese should be backing their currency uh, with real money, which would be gold and not, not fake money or fiat money like the dollar. So I think the world is waking up to the folly of a fiat monetary system. Uh, we were on a gold standard in this country legally, constitutionally up until 1971. The world was on a gold standard until 1971. Even though the dollar was the reserve currency, it was convertible into gold, uh, which gave it real value. Uh, that is not the case any longer, and the world can no longer pretend that the dollar has value because that is the root cause of all the global economic imbalances. It was the cause of the stock market bubble and the housing bubble, and the sooner the world re-embraces gold, the sooner we can have uh, you know, real recoveries around the world. Where is gold headed? Can you give us a number? It's headed a lot higher. I mean, I've said at least 5,000 is where I think gold's going to go at a minimum. Although I can't tell how much higher it might go because I don't know how much money uh, the Fed and other central banks are going to print uh, before they come to their senses. But I think it's a lot safer for people to store their wealth in gold than the dollar or even other currencies like the euro or the yen. Uh, I think there's a lot more safety there. No central bank can print gold. It has uh, rare and, and, and specific properties. Uh, that only gold has. So you have intrinsic value, you have scarce supply. Uh, maybe the supply will grow over time, but only very slowly. Uh, so I think that uh, it, what's really speculative is not gold, but, but the currencies. Speculation is holding the dollar and betting uh, that politicians in Washington are going to suddenly be fiscally responsible or betting that central bankers are going to suddenly be responsible. I think that's a big gamble. I think people that are holding U.S. currency, they're the ones that are speculating. And it's a, it's a, it's a wild a riverboat gamble. I would rather play it safe and own gold. 
Peter, last question real quickly. This week's Case-Shiller Home Price Index was a mixed bag. Do you think that we've hit a bottom in housing prices or can they go lower? Oh, they can go lower and they will go lower, particularly if there's no QE3, prices will go a lot lower. Uh, but if the Fed uh, uh, you know, blinks and we end up with a QE3, as I think, then that will uh, somewhat uh, diminish uh, the decline in real estate prices. But I still think they're going to go lower even with QE3, just not as low as they'll go without it. But of course, in real terms, adjusted for inflation, prices will drop even further with QE3 than without it. Uh, but who knows how much lower? I don't know. Uh, but if anybody is looking at housing as an investment, uh, they're, they're mistaken. They should look someplace else. Uh, is it possible that it makes sense to buy a house to live in it, even though you're going to lose money? That depends on uh, your circumstances. I mean, a lot of times renting is a much better alternative and people need to stop listening to the real estate agents that, that just tout real estate as if it can only go up and actually do the numbers and do what makes sense. Because for a lot of people, renting makes a lot more sense and the money they save uh, by renting and not owning, uh, well, they can invest that money in something that actually might go up. All right, CEO and Chief Global Strategist at Euro Pacific Capital, Peter Schiff, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me on.